good evening all of you i hope you all are doing well and today we are going to study the modern history british rule and its impact regional powers from 1858 to 1947 this is the part 3 of the series okay let's start all let's study all these aspects through the mcqs okay our first question simon commission visited india in which year what is the answer it is very simple question simon commission visited india in which year Okay, let's see the answer. Answer is option B, nineteen twenty-eight. Okay, Simon Commission visited in India. It is in the nineteen twenty-eight. It was formed in the nineteen twenty-seven itself, but when it visited in India is nineteen twenty-eight. So because of this Simon Commission, lot of protest happened in all over India. That is, go back Simon protest were happening. Okay, so remember, Simon Commission visited in India nineteen twenty-eight. Okay. next in addition to macaulay's minutes on education another landmark draft is also attributed to him identify the draft from the following so i repeat the question in addition to the macaulay's minutes on education another landmark draft is also attributed to him identify the draft from the following what is the answer this is also simple one what is the answer Okay, let's see the answer. Answer is option A. Draft of Indian Penal Code. That is our IPCs. Lot of IPC sections are there, right? So those Indian Penal Code were attributed to the Macaulay. Okay. So the Indian Penal Code was drafted in eighteen hundred and sixteen on the recommendation of the first Law Commission of India. So here you need to remember our Indian Penal Code. What we are using right now. Okay, that was the same Penal Code when it was drafted in eighteen sixty. okay this was recommended by the our first law commission of india that was established in 1834 so it is through the charter act of 1833 we have studied lot of acts right in the historical background of the constitution from 1773 to 1947 act so that is in that one of the act is charter act of 1833 so under the provisions of the charter act of 1833 so there was the recommendation of the formation of law commission of india that was in fact the first law commission of india that was established in 1834 so through this uh, recommendation they drafted the indian penal code okay it came into the force in the british india in 1862 so indian penal code is the main criminal code of india it is a comprehensive code intended to cover all substantive aspects of criminal law okay so here remember answer is option a draft of indian penal code okay so you need to remember it was drafted in 1860 through which act or through which commission law commission of india okay that is first law commission of india okay next the vestigal lords at simla is a well known ancient monument which of the following statements about the monuments are correct here quotes are given The lodge was built by seventeenth viceroy Earl Dufferin. Second, the present shape of the building was given by Earl of Marquis of Landon. Third, it is famous for holding three meetings before independence of India, including the cabinet mission. So these three statements are regarding the Vistical Lodge. It is in the Simla. So you need to find out which of the following statements are true regarding this lodge. What is the answer?
can see the answer. Answer is option C, one and three. Okay, so these two two statements are true. The Vistiga Lodge, it is also known as Rashtrapati Nivas. You can see in the picture. So this was one of the well-known ancient monument. Okay, it is Rashtrapati Nivas now. It is located on the observatory hills of the Simla, Himachal Pradesh. It was built during the reign of Lord Dupre. So that's why option one is right. Okay, next its construction started in the 1880 and was completed in the 1888. The cabinet mission 1946 was held in the Vistigal Lodge. Okay, so that's why option third is also right. Okay, this present shape of the building was given by this land phone. So that is not true. Okay, so one and third, two statements are true. That's why our option C is correct. Only one and three, not two. Okay, so remember, this is also known as Rastrapati Nivas. Where it is located? It is located in the Simla, Himachal Pradesh. Okay, so it was built during the reign of Lord Dufferin. Okay, next. The worst famine in India under the British rule occurred during. What is the answer? Here you need to find out the time period when the worst famine was happened in India under the British rule. Let's see the answer. Answer is B from 1876 to 1878. During that period of time, worst famine in India happened under the British rule. Okay. Next. Which among the following was the reason of the re resignation of Indian ministers in all the provinces in the year of 1939? Here you need to find out the reason why they have resigned in the 1939. What is the answer? Let's see the answer. Answer is option D. India was declared a party to the World War II without the consent of the provincial government. Okay, so here you can remember they're asking about the 1939. So that is the period when the Second World War happening. Okay, so World War II was happening. So what Britishers was made was they declared uh, India as a party to the World War II. So that too, without the consent of the provincial government. Provincial government were there in India. A lot of ministers were also there. But without even asking a single question to the Indian ministers, they have made India as a party to the World War II. So that created the angriness in the ministers, Indian ministers. So that's why they resigned to the provincial governments. Okay, so that is the reason they have resigned. Okay, I hope this is clear. Next. Queen Victoria's proclamation took place in. It's a very simple question. Which year the Queen Victoria's proclamation took place? What is the answer? I'll give you the hint. This Queen Victoria's proclamation made that uh, British government to, uh, sorry, the East India Company's ruling is end, uh, was ended in the India, okay? When it, uh, when it happened, which year? It's very simple, right? When East India Company's ruling ended in India. Okay, let's see the answer. Answer is B. 1858. That is after the Sipai Mutni, right? 1857, first Sipai Mutni happened. In fact, the first war of independence happened. 
So in the very next year, Queen Victoria's proclamation took place. So that ended the East India Company's ruling, administrator, administrative functions and all. So from now onwards, Victoria is the crown of the India. That proclamation was made, right? So remember, it was in the 1858. Next, identify the correct sequence of the following events of Indian history. So these are the different uh, events. Quotes are given below. You need to find out the current correct sequence of the events. What is the answer? Okay, let's see the answer. Answer is C. 3124 is the correct sequence. Okay, so partition of Bengal happened first. So partition of Bengal, when it happened? Which year? Anybody let me know in the comment section. This we have already discussed, right? So when, in which year it, the partition of Bengal happened? 1905, right? Yes, first partition of Bengal happened. So after that, foundation of the Indian Muslim League. So here carefully read the, the question first. Okay, it is not foundation of the Indian National Congress. In hurry, you might read like that. Okay, it is, they are asking foundation of Indian Muslim League. So that took place after the very next year of partition of Bengal in 1906. So next Surat split. Okay, Surat split happened. After that, transfer of capital from Calcutta to Delhi. So that's why option C is correct. 3124. I repeat once again. Partition of Bengal happened. So after that, foundation of Indian Muslim League, Surat split, then transfer of capital from Calcutta to Delhi. Okay, these are the four events and this is the correct sequence. I hope this is clear to you. Next. First Indian elected to the British House of Commons was Dada Bhai Navroji, who contested on the ticket of which party? So this is a very important question. What is the answer? So first Indian elected to the British House of Commons was Dada Bhai Navroji, who contested on the ticket of which party? Let's see the answer. Answer is option A, Liberal Party. Okay. In 1892, Dada Bhai Navroji was elected to the British Parliament on the Liberal Party ticket from the Central Pershubri. Okay. So here, remember, through the Liberal Party ticket, Dada Bhai Navroji contested to the election and he became the member of British House of Commons. In fact, he was the first Indian to be elected for the British House of Commons. Okay, so here you need to remember in sometimes examination they're going to ask who is the first Indian elected to the British House of Commons. So in that time you need to remember it is Dada Bhai Navaroji. Through which party? Through Liberal Party. Okay, so those two points you need to remember. Next, consider the following statements in regards to the Swaraj Party. So three statements are given. You need to find out the correct statements through the quotes given below. So first statement is, Suraj party was formed out of Congress to function as an independent political party. Second, the Swarajists believed in participation of the council of elections. Third, Swarajists got the majority in November 1923 elections due to, due to which they were able to vote the government in Central Assembly repeatedly. What is the correct answer here? Which all statements are true regarding the Swaraj party?
let's see the answer answer is option b only second statement is correct okay see both the swarajist and the no changers were engaged in the fierce political struggle so what happened is in one moment of time there were two different parties so one is swarajist party another one is no changers okay so swarajist and no changers they were engaged in the fierce of political struggle but both were determined to avoid the disastrous experience of the 1907 split at surat in 1907 surat split what happened congress was divided into two different parties but now it is not happening like that okay so rajist were also there no changes were also there but they are not creating the two independent political parties here okay they were together in the congress itself but their ideology were different okay so that's why option 1 is wrong so look at here what they are telling swaraj party was formed out of the congress okay so read carefully the question even in the examination you need to read the questions carefully and the statements carefully they are telling the swaraj party was formed out of the congress so look at here the statement telling out of the congress to function as an independent political party see here independent note it down so they it is not independent party so that's what i told you right the no changers so rajesh they both were there in the congress itself but they had different ideology okay on the advice of the mahatma gandhi the two groups decided to remain in the congress okay they were not independent parties they were decided to remain in the congress but to work in their separate ways so there was no basic difference between the two so rajesh members were elected to the councils okay so see here the second statement the swarajist believed in participation of the council election but no changes they did not believed in the participation to the council elections that is the only one difference between the two so other than that there is no much difference so that's why option 2 is only right so this third one is also wrong swaraj got the majority oh, no no this is wrong and first is also wrong i told you why it is wrong because it is not the independent party so that's why statement 2 is correct only 2 is correct answer okay i hope this is clear to you next consider the following statements in regard to the indian council act of 1919 again here quotes are given below statements are given first statement it introduced the bicameral legislature second it separated provincial budget from the central budget third it introduced the separate representation of chambers of commerce universities and zamindars which statements are correct regarding the indian council act of 1919 another name of indian council act of 1919 what is that can anybody let me know in the comment section another name of this 1919 act montego chambers for reforms right so you need to remember these are very important things okay 1919 act was also known as montego chambers for reforms okay what is the answer here let's see the answer answer is option a 1 and 2 okay both statements are correct third statement is wrong so first statement what is telling it introduced the bicameral legislature that is true okay through the council uh, this indian council act of 1919 they have, they have introduced the bicameral legislature in india okay so that is true next it separated provincial budget from the central budget okay so that is also true it it happened through the council of indian council act 1919 but this third statement uh, that is separate representation of the chambers of commerce universities and zamindars it was not introduced by the indian council act of 1919 in fact it was introduced by the indian council act of 1909 it is also called as morley minto reforms okay through that act they have introduced that into india but not through the indian council act 1919 okay so that's why one and two are correct third one is wrong okay i hope this is clear next consider the following statements two statements are given and you need to find out the correct statements using the quotes given below first statement 
the gandhi irving pact 1931 placed the indian national congress on an equal footing with the british indian government second the participation of muslims in the civil disobedience movement was less than that of the non cooperation movement what is the correct answer let's see the answer here both statements are true okay two two statements are correct the gandhi irving pact 1931 placed the indian national congress on an equal footing with the british indian government that is true and the participation of the muslim community in the civil disobedience movement was very less than when it compared to the non cooperation movement okay so both statements are true hence our option is c okay next which of the following statement is regard to the 3rd june plan are correct three statements are given you need to find out the correct answer from the quotes given below first statement the successor governments would be given dominion status second there was a provision for the boundary commission to determine boundaries of the successor state as india and pakistan third it was mandatory for india and pakistan to remain within the british commonwealth what is the correct answer think about it okay let's see the answer answer is option a first and second statements are correct So regarding the third June plan, the successor governments would be given the dominion status. That is true, and there was a provision for the boundary commission to determine the boundaries of the successor states as India and Pakistan. Okay, so these two statements are true according to the third June plan. So when you look at the third statement, it was mandatory for India and Pakistan to remain within the British Commonwealth. They did not put this provision under the third June plan. okay so it was not mandatory it was optional okay so first and second statements are true third is wrong okay next consider the following statements again two statements are given you need to find out the correct statements using the quotes given below first the provision of assam was created in the year 1911 second Eleven districts comprising Assam were separated from the Lieutenant Governorship of Bengal and established as an independent administration under the Chief Commissioner in the year eighteen seventy four. What is the correct answer? let's see the answer only b okay i mean second only is the correct answer b is the correct option see assam province was constituted in the year 1874 and 1875 okay they are telling about 1911 this is wrong that happened in the year of 1874 to 1875 so, so that's why statement 1 is wrong okay second statement is right so when 11 district comprising it was separated from the lieutenant governorship of the bengal and established as an independent administration under the chief commissioner that happened in the 1874 see here even though you don't know about this uh, question if you look at the year here they are telling in the first statement 1911 in the second statement they are giving 1874 there is a huge gap this would not be happen right this is this supposed to not this supposed to not happen so that's why if you uh, whenever you tackle such kind of questions so if you carefully read the statement then you will end up with the correct answer okay 1911 is a you know it's like 
20th century almost beginning of the 20th century it it is not possible to happen in that year like that you need to use your common sense okay so whenever you tackle such questions okay here option b is correct one is wrong here first statement is wrong only second statement is correct i hope this is clear to you next who among the following was the governor general of india immediately preceding chakravarti rajagopalachari that is c rajagopalachari what is the correct answer Okay, it's very simple one. Option B is right. Lord Mountbatten. Okay, Lord Mountbatten was presided by the C. Rajagopalachari. Lord Mountbatten was the last viceroy of India and the first Governor General of the Independent Dominion of India. Okay, so here you need to remember Lord Mount Mountbatten is last viceroy of India and the first Governor General of Independent Dominion of India. Okay, he was presided by. See Rajagopala Chari. Okay. Next. Arrange the following in chronological order. Again, events are given. You need to arrange them in the chronological order. What is the answer? It's a very simple one. Try to answer this. Okay, let's see the answer. Answer is option A. 1, 2, and 3. The partition of Bengal took place in 16th October 1905, right? I already told you in the previous question. Partition of Bengal took place in 16th October 1905. So next, the Chauri Chaura incident occurred at the Chauri Chaura in the Gorakhpur districts of the United Province. United Province, right now it is Uttar Pradesh. So that happened on 5th February 1922. And the first roundtable conference was opened officially by the King George on the November 12, 1930 in London. Okay, so first event that is partition of Bengal happened on 1905. Second Chauri Chaura incident happened on 1922. And roundtable conference that is first roundtable conference happened on 1930. Okay, so that's why 1, 2, 3 is the correct chronological order. Okay, next. Who among the following was the Viceroy of India at the time of formation of Indian National Congress? It's very important question and a very simple one. What is the answer? Who was Viceroy during the Indian National Congress formation? Let's see the answer. Option C is correct. Lord Dufferin. Okay. Lord Dufferin was the Viceroy of India at the time of formation of Indian National Congress. When the Indian National Congress formed in which year? And who proposed that? Let me know in the comment section. Right now. So when Indian National Congress formed? 1885, right? How can you forget? 1885. And who proposed that? Evo Hume, right? So remember the all those facts, very important. Okay. Next. Who among the following was not a member of the cabinet mission? What is the answer? Hmm. 
read carefully they are asking who among the following was not a member of cabinet Let's see the answer. Answer is option C, Radcliffe. Okay, so Radcliffe he was not a member of cabinet mission. So apart from that, Sir Stafford Cripps he was there in the cabinet mission plan. A V Alexander was there. Patrick Lawrence where he was also there. Okay, Radcliffe was not there. Okay, next, A Forgotten Empire. It is a very famous book. Okay, A Forgotten Empire written by the renowned historian Robert Savell. is about which of the following empires so what is the answer i repeat once again a forgotten empire written by the renowned historian robert sewell is about which of the following empire a very famous book okay a forgotten empire if you are free you can read that let's see the answer option c is right it is about the vijayanagara empire okay so vijayanagara very famous empire right so robert civil was a civil servant of madras presidency he was keeper of the record office of madras and he authored the book a forgotten empire vijayanagara a contribution to the history of india okay so remember a forgotten empire was written by whom robert sewell it is about which empire vijayanagara empire so if you have any free time please read this book it is awesome okay next which among the following was not one of the provision of the communal award so read carefully the question they are telling which one is not the provision of communal award what is the answer let's see the answer answer is option d the separate electorates were to the were to law lapse at the end of 10 years it was not the provisions of communal award apart from that see a b c look at this a b c statements member of depressed classes were assigned reserved seats and separate electorates it was there okay it was in fact one of the main uh, provision of the communal award so next separate electorates for the muslims it was also there next separate electorates for the europeans and the six this was also the provision but the last one the separate electorates were to lapse at the end of 10 years it was not the provision of the communal award so that's why option d is correct okay next consider the following statements relating to the famous muzaffar murders statements are given uh, quotes are given below you need to find out the correct answer using the quotes what is the answer here about the muzaffar murders in 1908 let's see the answer all of these statements are true okay see look at the statement first second and third the first statement is telling the bomb which was hurled at their 
carriage of Mr. Freeman and her daughter was actually intended for the Mr. Kingsford, the district judge of Mujaffar, Mujaffarpur. Okay, so what happened was the revolutionaries wanted to kill the Mr. Kingsford. Okay, revolutionaries were there in India. You, we have uh, learned that in the modern history, right? Those revolutionaries wanted to kill the Mr. Kingsford because he had inflicted the severe punishment on the Swadeshi activist. He was a judge of Mujaffarpur. That's why they wanted to kill the Mr. Kingsford. But instead of that, so the bomb was thrown on the carriages of the Mr. Fling and her daughter. They were killed instead of this person. Okay, so that's why first statement, second statement is true. So next third is Kim Duram and Prapulla Chaki had to pay the penalty for their action by death. This is also true. Okay, so all three statements are true regarding the Mujapur murders that happened on 1908. Okay, they were intended to kill this uh, king's bird, but they ended up killing the Mr. Fring and her daughter. See, on the evening of 30 April 1908, Khudiram threw a bomb on the carriage of Kingsport, but it was occupied not by the Kingsport, but the wife and daughter of the barrister Frank Kennedy were killed instead of Kingsport. That's what I told you, right? So that's why all these statements are true. Next, when Lord Mountbatten became the first Governor General of India, who among the following became the Governor General for Pakistan? What is the answer? Very simple. Let's see the answer. Answer is B. Muhammad Ali Jinnah. Okay. So when Lord Mountain became the first Governor General of India, the Lord, uh, sorry, the Muhammad Ali Jinnah became the Governor General for the Pakistan. Okay. Next, which one of the following was not a result of British colonial rule in India? So read carefully. They are asking which one of the following was not a result of British colonial rule in India? <coughs> Sorry. You can easily guess this. Okay, let's see the answer. Answer is option D. That is rune of Indian feudalism. The rune of Indian feudalism was not the result of British colonial rule in India. So rest of all, see, rune of Indian agriculture, it happened mainly the agriculture sector affected because of the British colonial rule in India. Right? So our agriculture sector was completely ruined. Next, rune of Indian industries. Obviously, it was done right our industries were ruined and the Indian trade was ruined because of the British colonial rule in India. But the fourth one is rule of Indian feudalism. It was not the result of the British colonial rule in India. Okay. In fact, the uh, it was in the later period that how feudalism got ended. Okay. So not through the British colonial rule. I hope this is clear to you. That's why they're asking which one is not a result of British colonial rule. So that's why option B is the correct answer. Okay. Next. What was the private purse in the context of the history of modern India? It's a very important question. You can relate this private purse in the, um, what is that? Kerala, Padmanath, uh, Swami, not Padmanath, sorry. Some temple issue was there. I forgot. I will let you know. Yeah, Padmanath is only temple only. So what was the private purse in the context of history of modern India? It was in the current affairs news last year. Oh, 
What is Travi first? Let's see the answer. Answer is option C. It is a grant given by the government of India to the East Wild Prince of India. Okay. So, private purse in India was a payment. Okay. It is a one amount. Okay. Payment that was made to the royal families. So, to make you understand, uh, say for example, Mysore Maharajas, they are there, right? So, they were the royal families. They were East Wild Princes, right? For them, Indian government, they had paid some payment. Okay, so they occupied their uh, lot of property, right? For that, they have given some payment. That is called as private purse. Okay, so private purse in India was a payment that was made to the royal families of the former princely states of India. See, former princely states of India is also same. The East World princely states of India is also same. Okay, the private purse was created as a part of agreements made by them to merge with the Union of India in the year of 1947. Okay, so Indian unification happened, right, during the uh, year of 1947. So during that agreement, they have created the Privy Force because a lot of different, different fragmented royal families were there in India. They wanted to join the Indian Union. So behalf of that, they have made the separate provision, Privy Force. Okay, if, uh, yes, if we join to the Indian unification, you need to pay this and this amount for us. Okay, for the royal families. So that is called as private purse. Okay. Now this is clear. Next. The first effort at drafting a dominion status constitution for India was made in response to the. So what is the answer? It's very simple. Again. So here D is first round table conference. Okay. What is the answer? The first effort at drafting a dominion status constitution for India was made in response to the. Let's see the answer. Simon Commission is the correct answer. Okay. Simon Commission was appointed under the chairmanship for Sir John Simon on November 1927 by the British government to report on the working of Indian constitution established by the Government of India Act of 1919. The commission consisted of seven members. None of the Indians was appointed in the commission. That Because of that, what happened? I told you, right? Protests were happened. Go back, Simon. Protest happened after the Simon Commission visited to the India. So just after that, the first effort at drafting a dominion status constitu constitution for India was made. Okay, that was made in response to the Simon Commission. Okay, because Simon Commission, Indians did not accept it. So because of that, another effort was made by the Indians in regard to the, or you can say in response to the Simon Commission. Because Simon Commission did not consist of any one single Indian person. Okay, I hope this is clear too. Next, the cabinet mission plan for India envisaged a, what is the answer? Okay, let's see the answer. Option D is correct. Union of states. Not federation, not confederation, unitary form of government. Those are not correct. Union of state is the correct answer. The cabinet mission plan for India envisaged a union of state. Cabinet mission of 1946 to India aimed to discuss and plan for the transfer of power from the British government to the Indian leadership. Because in 1947, we got independence, right? So because of that, in one year before, they were making this cabinet mission plan. That is for which purpose? To transfer the power from the British government to the Indian leadership, providing India with independence. The mission consisted of Lord Patik Lawrence, the Secretary of State for India, 
Sir Stafford Cripps and A. V. Alexander. We have studied right in the previous question. So these people were there in the cabinet mission plan. Okay. So that envisages the union of states. That you need to remember. Next. British colonialism in India saw the emergence of new cities. Calcutta. Now it is Kolkata. Was one of the first cities. Which of the following villages were amalgamated to form the city of Calcutta? What is the answer? Which of the following villages were amalgamated to form the city of Calcutta? Let's see the answer. Option C is correct. Okay, Sultanuti, Kalikata, and Gobindpur. Okay, so these three villages were amalgamated to form the city of Kolkata. So remember, Sultanuti, Kalikata, Gobindpur. Okay, next. Under the forceful thrust of British rule, a rapid transformation of the Indian economy took place. In this context, which of the following statements or statement is correct? Here statements are given. Quotes are given below. You need to find out the correct statements using the quotes given below. What is the answer? What is the answer? It's very simple one. If you read the sentence, we'll get it. Okay, let's see the answer. Option A is correct. Okay, first and third statements are true. See, there is nothing uh, difficulty in this. See, look at the first and the third statement. So instead of that, look at the second one. So what it is telling? The influx of cheap Indian products into England gave a great blow to English textile industries. See, influx of cheap Indian products into England. Was this happened ever? No, it did not happen. In fact, opposite was happened, right? Influx of cheap England goods, England products that came into the Indian market and it given the big blow to the uh, Indian textile industries. Okay, so that's why option two is wrong. Okay, if option two is wrong, option C and D gone. Only left with A and B. So in A and B, what is common? Option one is common. Okay, now you have to look at whether three is right or wrong. Okay, look at the third statement. The 19th century saw the collapse of the traditional Indian village economy. Obviously true. This happened, right? Our cottage industry gone, our Indian textile, traditional textile industry gone. It completely saw the collapse of the traditional Indian village economy and fresh economic alignment along the commercial commercial lines. That happened. So third is right. So option A is right. One and three. So anyhow, look at the first statement also. Indian economy was transferred into a colonial economy in the 19th century. Okay, obviously it happened. Indian economy was there before the European invaders came to India. Okay, so it, it was transferred completely into a colonial economy in the 19th century. Then whose structure was determined by the Britain's fast developing industrial economy? Yes, obviously it was it happened. It was, you know, the structure of our Indian economy in the 19th century, it was you know, determined by the Britain's fast developing industrial economy, not by the Indian factors. Okay, through the industrial economy of the Britain's our Indian economic structure formed. 
Okay, that's why first and third statements are true. Second one is wrong. Okay. Next. Census of India was started for the first time during the rule of. What is the answer? Be quick, guys. Don't worry about giving wrong answer, okay? Just try to participate. Let's see the answer. Answer is D, Lord Curzon. Okay, census of India. Census uh, is going to happen, right? After every 10 years. So, such kind of census of India was started for the first time during the rule of Lord Curzon. Okay, next. The resolution of total independence of India was passed during the tenure of... What is the answer? Okay, let's see the answer. Lord Vevel. Okay, during the Lord Vevel, this resolution of total independence of India was passed. So, total independence means what? Food Nasvarajan. Such kind of resolution was made by the Indian National Congress. It was passed during the tenure of Lord Webin. Okay. Next. An important event of Lord Dufferin's tenure was as Viceroy was. An important event of Lord Dufferin's tenure as Viceroy was. Let's see the answer. Establishment of Indian National Congress. Okay. So establishment of Indian National Congress was the important event of Lord Dufferin's tenure. Next. Who among the following had not participated in the second roundtable conference? It's very simple when we have discussed in the previous class also. So here, uh, not only about the second roundtable conference, you need to remember all three roundtable conference in which year they happened and who were participated from India. You don't need to know about who were the members from the London. Okay. <clears throat> At least you need to remember in all three roundtable conference who were participated, who were did not participate, who did not participate. Okay. That you need to remember. Make a chart of it. Let's see the answer. Answer is D. Jawaharlal Nehru. Okay, so Jawaharlal Nehru, he had not participated in the second roundtable conference. Okay. Next, Sir Michael O'Dyer was shot dead on thirteenth March, nineteen forty, in London by which person? It's a very famous person. You have to know about him. What is the answer? Who killed the Michael O'Dyer? Let's see the answer. Uddam Singh. How can you forget him? Okay, sir, Michael O'Dyer was shot dead on the 13th March 1940 in London. Uddam Singh went to London to kill this person. Okay, so he killed the Michael O'Dyer. Okay, next. Who was the Prime Minister of England when the Montego Chelmsford Act was passed in 1919? This Montego Chelmsford Act of 1919 is same and Indian Council Act of 1919, it is also same, both are same. 
who was the prime minister of england at that time let's see the answer george okay lord george he was the prime minister of england when montego james bond act was passed in 1990 okay this is lord george okay l o r d so lord george next which among the following year surendranath banerjee was eliminated from the indian civil service What is the answer? You have to know about Surendranath Banerjee if you are preparing for competitive exam or any exam conducted by UPSC. Think about it. What is the answer? So let's see the answer. Answer is B. Eighteen hundred and ninety-two. So Indira Banerjee was eliminated from the Indian Civil Service in the year of eighteen hundred and ninety-two. Okay. Next, consider the following statements in regards to the Gandhi Irwin fact. So three statements are given. You need to find out the correct statements using the quotes given below. first statement according to the according to the fact british government accepted to release all the political prisoners second irwin agreed on giving the right to peaceful and non aggressive picketing of liquor and foreign cloth shops third british government allowed making the salt for personal consumption in coastal regions Let's see the answer. If you eliminate first statement here, then you will end up with correct answer. See, option B is correct. Two and three only. So look at the first statement. According to the fact, British government accepted to release all political prisoners. Oh, it did not happen like that. How can they release all political prisoners? Even though if you don't know anything, if you use your common sense, you can easily eliminate your first statement. Okay, British is they. They will never, you know, release all that to all political prisoners. Not only few, all the political prisoners. How can they leave? Okay, first statement is wrong. So next we left with two and three. So look at the option A, C, and D. It all consists of first statement, right? So you can easily eliminate A, C, and D. Okay, you don't have to see whether two and three are right or wrong. Obviously, answer is B. Like that, you need to eliminate in your real exam. Okay. So anyhow, look at the second and third statement. Irwin agreed on giving the right to peaceful and non-aggressive picketing of liquor and foreign cloth shops. That is true. Next, British government allowed making of this salt for personal consumption in the coastal regions. That is true. Okay, first statement is wrong. Next, consider the following statements and select the correct answer from the quotes given below. Here, assertion and reason are there. Assertion. The Congress ministers in all the provinces resigned in the year nineteen thirty nine. Second, the Congress did not accept the decision of the Viceroy to declare war against the Germany in the context of Second World War. What is the answer? This question, the same question we discussed previously, but in a different way, right? You can easily answer this.
let's see the answer answer is option a same question we discussed now previously what's uh, so difficult in this see assertion and reason they are individually true and r is the correct explanation of a so congress ministers in all the provinces they resigned in the year 1939 that happened why it happened because congress did not accept the decision of the viceroy to declare the war against the germany in the context of second world war and also they have made the india as the party even without the consent of the provincial ministers they were there in india okay so that's why the assertion is true reason is also true and reason is the correct explanation of the assertion okay next there are two statements one labeled as the assertion and another one as reason again as the assertion reason first the british sovereignty continued to exist in free india second the british sovereign appointed the last governor general of free india examine these two statements carefully and select the correct answer by using the codes given below it's very simple one see in examination hall all you need to do is read questions carefully okay and most of the questions will be in a such a way that that if you use your common sense you will end up with the correct answer there is no rocket science what is the answer yeah but you need to know the basics and all that is important Okay, let's see the answer. A is false, but R is true. See, A is obviously false, right? See what they are telling: the British sovereignty continued to exist in free India. How it is possible? The British sovereignty ceased to exist in India after the August fifteen ninety four decision. Free India means independence, independent India. Sovereignty, British sovereignty did not continue. It got ceased after the free India, right? So, assertion is wrong. So next, left with the reason, the British sovereign sovereign appointed the last governor general of India. I told you Mount Batten, right? So our reason is true. So our reason is false. Okay, D is the correct option. Next, after eighteen fifty seven, which of the following announced at a darbar at Allahabad the assumption of the government of India by the sovereign of Great Britain? Who announced that? So this is factual thing. You hear you in such questions. You need to know the facts. Let's see the answer. Lord Canning. Okay, option A is correct. Lord Canning is the answer. After eighteen fifty seven, the Lord Canning announced at a darbar at Allahabad the assumption of the government of India by the sovereign of Great Britain. So, what does that means? That means that even the East India Company ruling and administration was ended. Now onwards, it was all controlled by the British. It is now onwards going to be controlled by the Great Britain. that is in the name of crown that is the meaning of the statement okay next statement 1 and statement 2 are given statement 1 the economy of india in the 19th century came to a state of ruin under english east india company statement 2 english east india company's acquisition of diwani right led to the minis uh, miseries of the peasants and those associated with the traditional handicrafts industry of india it is same like assertion and reason but now they have changed as statement 1 and statement 2 here you need to find out the correct statement through the codes given below 
What is the answer? Let's see the answer. Option A is correct. Both the statements are individually true and statement two is the correct explanation of statement one. Statement one, what it is studying? The economy of India in the 19th century came to a state of ruin under the English East India Company. That is obviously true. Next, statement two, English East Indian Company's acquisition of Diwani rights. So Diwani right over the Bengal, Orissa and Bihar region. Okay, we have studied right. Diwani right was given to the Britishers over the Bengal, Orissa and Bihar region. That led to the miseries of the peasants, obviously. And those associated with the traditional handicraft industry of India. So Diwani rights is nothing but the collection of the revenue over that particular area. So that right was given to the British East India Company. So because of that, a lot of uh, misbehave happened with the peasants and also those people who are associated with the traditional handicrafts industry of India. So that is the main reason why the Indian economy in the 19th century came to the state of ruin under the British East Indian Company. So that's why both the statements are individually holds true and statement two is the correct explanation of statement one. Okay. So in this topic, we learned British rule and its impacts and regional powers from 1858 to 1947. If you have any doubts regarding the questions we discussed till now, let me know in the comment section. And solve all the test results given in the edirapid.com. Any questions? Any queries? Any doubts? Okay, guys, I assume there are no doubts. Thank you so much and see you in the next class.